The value of yesteryear's prophetic announcements is known by subsequent developments which disclose the reality contained in the prophecy. Hence, in concluding this exposition of physical continuity of the universe and the modern features confirming its reality, there is fulfillment of yesteryear's dream so long denied in such manner has established the eternal worth of bygone prophets and their prophecies thus in an acknowledgement of ancient disclosures of other worlds. The events of this time show cosmic reality to be diametrically opposed to the presentations of the astronomical star chart and it is established for all who will see that from Pluto to Mercury and from sickness to Ceteris the landmass underlying the continuous skylight of whatever magnitude of brightness is as dense as the land on which our terrestrial civilization is built throughout the entire celestial realm. That condition applies from Phoenix to Sophia Sand Lipids and from Endless through the celestial areas of Delphitness and Polaris. There is evidence the flashing fast looks of an incomparable skylight, diamond fashioned by a master hand. The skylight beacons named stars guide the course of mariners on the swelling ocean's play, and they direct the lonely desert pilgrim who has faltered in his way throughout the Creator's realistic universe structure. The light speed limitless messages of hope and inspiration as they dutifully weave a million luminous shrines for astrological faithfuls. What difference does it make to one who hopes? If the sky like the areas are named stars, the beacons and the shrines are each, and everyone just patches of God's magnificent and protective skylight, which close and fades from time to time, and from place to place, and in spite of the illusions they present and the delusions they impose, who could conceive a greater perfection for the divine expression, could the light's measure of guidance be considered less through advancements of knowledge concerning their creatively realistic foundation as areas of protective sky, could to open the ambitions of astrologers, ardent adherents be diminished through a discernment of the eternal foundation and the factual expressions of their shrines. Could it detract from the measure of spiritual uplift for the religiously devout to know that the light which shone over Bethlehem was of the nature of all celestial? And terrestrial skylights were not the very intensity of that light. Over Bethlehem was of the nature of all celestial and terrestrial skylight. Would not the very intensity of that light over Bethlehem proclaim the superiority of the infant whose arrival it announced and would his magnificence be less if the light was known as skylight or a resent star? Moreover, how could the light be considered more purposeful through the designation star when star has been proved to be in the category of the illusory? that truth was not known when Christ was born. A rose by any other name would smell as sweet and the intensified brilliancy of any sky like the area would be just as bright and as purposeful by any other name than star. The illusion-based framework of astronomy prescribed star chart designations for luminous celestial sky areas as stars of varying brightness and the measure of brilliancy extends from that of the first magnitude to the light diminishing point of the 21st magna and fainter, but that which is prescribed by astronomy represents in a universe of reality the varying and extremely purposeful skylight intensity. The variations may be considered as follows. Is the sky gas jet turned high or low? Is there a 50 watt bulb or a 500 watt bulb? Ernie, at the celestial point of our immediate observation, astronomical planets, star clusters, double stars, galaxies, nebulae, or the Milky Way, are additional aspects of the infinite celestial skylight which extends over the last two land, and water areas in the sky and its life exists, even though the vagueness of light over some celestial land and water areas defies telescopic detection. The identical variation of celestial skylight brilliancy, now proved to apply to our terrestrial sky wooden pale celestial astronomers, to provide the same identifying labels of star-star cluster or Milky Way to luminous areas of our terrestrial sky. It is no longer a secret. The terrestrial sky, like the areas present to inhabitants of celestial land air, resolved at which celestial sky, like the areas present to observation from terrestrial land locations and let it be forgotten, the celestials must look up or hug from their land positions to observe the heavens above presented by terrestrial sky, like the areas even as terrestrial inhabitants look up, or how to view the heavens above, presented by celestial skylight areas. The sky-like presentation 
can never change while the universe at its life and EUR from the distant and unknown our advanced terrestrial arrival, the creation's lights have mystified the colorful high priests of ancient pagan ritual, and then the sages and prophets of expanding civilization wondered about the luminous splendor of celestial sky like the areas comprising our so-called heavens above, some were gifted with an inner sight which enabled them to envisage other worlds of godly ordination beyond this meager terrestrial area, and their atonement with a sublime creative element inspired eloquent utterances of other worlds, then vague record of their extraordinary disclosure ISM was made on stone and parchment, and then alas the import of their disclosures was made at skewer, their dictums did not represent the flaunting of shallow and boisterous egotism, they reflected pure ego linked to the unfathomable prima causa, their attunement with first cause, or God endowed them with clearest perception of the universe structure. No one named that attunement is, one will, a spark of divinity, divine revelation, perception, intuition, inspiration, cosmic consciousness, or whatever may please the individual fancy. The incontrovertible fact is that along the line of human march, there has been from time to time the humble mortal conveyors of shining fragments of truth, absolute. And that truth was so articulate that average human attempts and interpretation rendered as inarticulate. It was like a blinding light which made seeing impossible. They had such extraordinary endowment, were noble, but wretchedly burdened souls, for they were designed as mediums through which tiny portions of realistic creative development were to be disclosed for the uplift and growth of mankind. Alas, that arrangement by divine will was not to be imposed without resentment by the multitude at the time and place of disclosure. They feared the intrusion by an unknown purveyor of so unknown a product as creative truth. Hence, they who was strange in her sight permitted them to perceive beyond the ability of their brethren were never welcomed for the richness of their disclosures. On the contrary, they were viewed with alarm. Is some strange malady come to Blake mankind, the Stephen Ordinal? But nonetheless, I also fear of the unknown demand that in the community of blind men, he whose sight must be destroyed and destroyed, they were with hemlock drink, with crucifixion, and with other more advanced forms of assassination. Therefore, fateful, complex, and confusing have been the attempts to interpret the universe of reality. But the attempts have persisted since that hour of divine revelation, when the soul of the ancient prophet Moses, attuned to the voiceless decree of other worlds ordained from the beginning, and the decree's uplifting message of promise, was interpreted through the voice of Moses to the poor, in spirit of his particular time, and place there are other worlds fashioned as this earth, yet who among the tribes of that time and place was capable of faith, oming the meaning in words which were about most clarity to Moses who if that desolate era could have been expected to place credence in the profound message Moses had received, could the obscured word multitude at that time and place tuning, has it obscured word creative development so extravagantly rich and finest to be lost to average attunement. There were, however, among the multitude a few bold souls who though failing they grasped the import of the prophets, message fearfully repeated the message, and the repetition caused vague record of the prophet's words to be carried along the corridors of time. But the all-knowing could not be defeated. He disclosed to the immortal prison is the secret of his vast universe construction. And the Christus was magnificent, terrible, vainly reiterated, the earlier pronouncement of other worlds. Like unto this earth in my father's house are many mansions he who truly seeks will find again the inspiring and guiding pronouncement of revelation proved to be too profound for acceptance. Though it was never to be forgotten, it was never believed, and the crystal I offer of many mansions was ridiculed by the scribes and the Pharisees, who would not see their misinterpretations of crystal parable, make our Father's house the universal, a shambles of vague conjecture opposed to Christic dictum, and for nearly two thousand years access to any land area of the universe of Argos has been denied to terrestrial inhabitants at a later time and place in the advance of civilization, the meaning of crystally parable was rendered more obscure through professional and commercialized observation and abstract figuring of the universe. Hence Christ's lofty parable which embraced creative reality was considered to have application only to the ideal of nirvana utopia and paradise.
popular misconception given form by deck dates of abstract theory founded many mansions imply nothing more important than the conditioning of minds during this stage of human existence and the profound truth of universe structure was supplanted by fiction evolved from hypotheses based on the illusory that fiction masquerading as fact was capable of projecting a severely imposing universe structure but the projection of illusion is fact represented a foundationalist father's house the universal dire metrically opposed to creative origin and we disclosure there is no record that Christ or Moses explained the reasons for the many worlds of their disclosure nor did they describe the land course into such worlds but it is reasonable to conclude that Christ would have provided adequate explanation if he had survived the multitude sphere and hatred of unknown arbiters at land beyond the earth that land beyond was unknown to the scribes and the Pharisees of Christ's time later the Quran described the conjectured extremities of the earth as the lands of eternal darkness hence they were fearful areas leading into hell and Christ's message of intended inspiration for the theorists as well as the multitude served only to accentuate their fear now three three hundred years after the disclosure by Moses a nearly two thousand years since Christ spoke of many inhabited universe areas like the earth there is blazing the United Press dispatch out of date of April 25th 1955 Russian scientists to drive tractor over the surface of the moon fantastic such words apply only insofar as the new procedure invention or discovery must be considered unreal because of its newness